Okay. So this is a great time to work with the snake because he's already active and alert and moving around his enclosure. And he isn't hiding at my presence. And so I'm able to walk up to the enclosure and he's still staying out. So then the next step is to take the lid off. And if at any point in time he performs escape behaviors or he hides or he starts striking at the glass, I want to back off. But he isn't doing those things. And so I'm going to continue to move forward with my training plan. Just keeping in mind his behavior and watching that he isn't trying to escape, that he's not exhibiting any yellow or red zone behaviors, that he's not hiding. Because if at any point he does those things, I want to back off. Now I want to just show him the target from outside of the enclosure and he's looking at it. So then I'm going to move it inside his enclosure. And he's looking at my hand instead of the target. So I want him to orient towards the target. I'm just going to leave it there. Good. And then offer the reinforcement. The reason I didn't move the target in front of his face is because that's very intrusive and I need to give him an opportunity to recognize where that target's at and choose to move towards it on his own. Now, this snake has been trained before. He's had a few target training sessions, so this isn't his first experience with it. But his first experience with it was simply me having the target out here where he could see it at the same time as I fed him. And when he wasn't hiding, when I would present the target, then I started moving the target inside of the enclosure and just sitting it there so that he could see it while I was feeding him. I wasn't sticking it in his face. I wasn't expecting him to move towards it yet. I'm just getting him used to the targets there and then food appears or wow, every time food appears, there's this green ball behind it or near it or outside of it. And when I don't see the green ball, there's no food. And so he starts associating this target with something that is reinforcing to him, not something that he's afraid of. Ideally, you want the snakes to initially see the target as something that is neutral or that they're curious about. But if they retreat from it, if they're afraid of it, you want to let them go. You don't want to force that in their face or chase them with it because then it's only going to make the experience more frightening for them. It's going to make the experience worse. So I'm going to leave him alone now with his rodent so that he can eat and then we'll do a second session. So this little corn snake is a clutch mate to the one we just fed and she's hiding. So we are going to see if she voluntarily comes out of hiding or not. She's in her hide down here and I am trying to determine if she's in blue or not. She may be in blue and sometimes they will still eat when they're in blue, but their vision's obviously affected. So I'm going to see, well, it looks like, and I know that you're not gonna probably be able to see this on videotape, but that she's still responding somewhat to the target. She's moved around inside her hide and she is looking in the direction of the target, but I'm not sure if she's responding to the actual target or just the movement. So she came to the hole of the hide in response to the target. And now I have a food item here, which she's obviously smelling and she's coming out for. And so even though she is in blue, I can see clearly now that her eyes are clouded over, she still responded to activity in her enclosure. She stuck her head at the hole of the hide and then she came out when she smelled the reinforcer and she took it. And I'll obviously, you know, she's already eating it. Corn snakes are pretty good eaters. And so sometimes it's, they're not affected when they're in blue. But my point with this is she's in the early stages of target training, but she's had no aversive experiences 
in association with me or in association with the target and the training process. Everything has been reinforcing for her from the very beginning. We started out very slowly with just presenting the target outside of the enclosure, feeding her in the enclosure, and then presenting the target in the enclosure and feeding her next to it, and then presenting just the target. And when she just even looked at it, we presented the food and we just went step by step like that until she recognized that the target meant she was going to get fed. And this particular snake, when she's not going through an ecdesis cycle, will now follow the target out of hiding, over the perch, out of the enclosure and into a shift box. But I just wanted to show you what's possible when you build up that trusting relationship and when the snake has no aversive associations between you, the target equipment, the training equipment, the training process, when they have only positive or reinforcing associations, they're really willing to do a lot. So despite the fact that her vision's impaired, that she's in blue, she still responded to me, making noise, showing her the target, coming to the hole of her hide and taking the food reinforcer because this has always been a positive experience for her. She hasn't had anything scary or aversive happen. And so this is what's possible when you develop that kind of relationship from the beginning. I was trying to rack my brain and figure out if I had a snake that had not been exposed to target training at all. And I do have one here. This is a Lampropeltis alterna, a California or a, a gray banded king snake. And she has had no exposure to target training because I have been doing foraging exercises with her and she's been doing puzzle feeding. And so I'm gonna show you how I introduced the target for the very first time with the snake. And the first thing that has to happen is the snake has to be visible and out, which she is. And then she has to be, she has to remain visible and out when you're present. And so I'm going to open her enclosure and I mean, I'm not sure where her head is. And so I'm just going to sit here for now with the target visible and see if she turns and looks in my direction or anything. You can see that she's right here. She was moving around her enclosure and I opened the door and she froze. So freezing is a yellow zone behavior, and it means that they're aware something unusual is going on, something has changed in their environment, and they're pausing to assess if it's a threat or not. And so what she does next determines what I do next. If she gets frantic, if she exhibits red zone behaviors, if she becomes fearful and hides or tries to escape, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go away. If she doesn't do that, I'm just gonna wait here to see what her next move is. And hopefully that's at some point to start moving around again and see me here and see the target here. But right now she's just frozen in position. And so I'm gonna basically freeze in position and wait for her to make the next move. And now she's slowly moving. And I think she must be burrowing under this rock or under her aspen bedding. I'm not sure where her head is. So I'm just going to stay right here and I'm not going to do anything. And I'm going to see if she goes into hiding or if she turns around to come out and investigate what is out here. Okay, I see her head's actually at this end. So I'm going to slide the glass open on this end. 
because here's her front. She still doesn't see me or see the target, but she's aware that something's happening because she can tell that the doors are sliding. She can sense that the airflow is different because the door is open now. They do have some ability to hear airborne sounds, so it's possible that she hears some of my voice. But I'm still not going to do anything to push the issue any further. I'm going to simply be here. And I'm going to monitor her reaction to my presence. And then if she ever notices it, I'm going to monitor her reaction to the target ball, which should be neutral, which I want it to be either neutral or something that she's curious about. It would have been ideal if her head had been out when I initiated this process, but I, she was just moving around. I could see her body moving around and I wasn't sure where her head is, but I just wanted to take advantage of the fact that she is moving around. Now, oh, it looked like she was almost gonna bring her head out. She's just burrowing and pushing under her substrate right here. This is her head under here. And since this is a species that does do some burrowing, she has pretty deep substrate and she can completely disappear underneath it. And plus this enclosure has an area under here that she can disappear into sort of like a tunnel. But what I don't wanna do here is anything to try to prompt behavior because this is her very first time exposed to the target I don't want to do anything that's going to cause her to have a fearful experience whatsoever. So I'm just presenting it. I'm just having it present. And if she sees it, she sees it. And then I gauge her reaction to it. If she doesn't see it, I'm not going to do anything to prompt her to see it. <gasps> Here she is. So she does see the target. She's curious about it. That's really great. I'm not going to move it closer. I'm just going to hold it there and I'm going to present a rodent. That was great. So she was really curious about the target. That was lucky for me. She accepted my presence here, which that's no surprise because her enclosure is next to my desk. And so she visibly can see me and see me moving around a lot. And that's an advantage to me because she's already habituated to my presence and she doesn't see me as a threat. But she has never seen this target stick before. And so all I did was hold it here. And I wasn't going to put it in her face. I wasn't going to move it closer to her. I wasn't going to do anything except let her see it and then give her the food. She actually was curious about it and came towards it. So that's fantastic. You know, that's already a step ahead of the game. But now what I'm going to do is leave her be because I think I'm my presence and the presence of the target stick is distracting her from eating. So I'm going to walk away for a few minutes and leave her there with the rodent. So she ate that first rodent and now she's kind of curious about coming out of her enclosure. And that doesn't surprise me because she's used to foraging exercises. And so I just used that as an opportunity to do a second session. And I planned for that possibility by thawing out three very small fuzzy mice for her. And if we only got one session in, that's fine. It's not going to hurt her to have a small meal. But now we've gotten a second session in, and she really reacted in a positive manner to that target. So I'm very excited about that since this is her first 
session. However, she has a few things going in her favor, and that is she's already used to me and habituated to me being close to her and my presence and moving around her enclosure. And she is already used to foraging exercises and puzzle feeders. So interaction with objects and food and me aren't completely alien to her, but the target training is. This is absolutely the first time I've attempted target training with her whatsoever, and it's absolutely the first time that she has seen this target. And I feel that she's responding to it very well. So she's finished that second rodent, and now I have to make a decision if I'm going to end this session or do a third repetition. And I'm kind of going to watch her and see what she chooses to do. Just prior to me asking her to do that second repetition, she came out of her enclosure and she actually started moving along the outside of her enclosure. Now I'm going to watch to see what she does. If she retreats back into her enclosure, I'm going to take that as a sign to end the session. However, if she turns around and is looking at me for more engagement, or she's coming out of her enclosure like she wants to explore, then I will probably do a third repetition. But I'm going to leave that basically up to her. And snakes will often do a lot of approach and retreat. So just because they don't come directly out or come directly to the puzzle or forging exercise or come directly to the target doesn't mean that they aren't interested in engaging. Sometimes they'll approach those things from the side or after lots of a, approach and retreat. And sometimes after one repetition, they will go back into their enclosure, but then they'll circle around and come back out. And so we don't want to rush this process. We want to just give her time to decide what she wants to do. And while at first it looked like she was going to go back in her enclosure, now she's sticking her head back out. And she's kind of looking around. So I'm going to offer her one more rodent, one more repetition here, and see how she responds. Now she's rubbing her face on objects the way that they often do when they're finished eating. She looked at the target and didn't exhibit any fear behaviors or stress behaviors when she saw it, but she also didn't come towards it like she wanted to earn another reinforcer. She looked at it and acknowledged it and then she turned away from it. And so part of teaching cooperative behaviors is us recognizing whether the animal is consenting to participate in the activity or not. And if she's saying, yes, I'll engage with you in this activity again, she'll come back and she'll engage. But if she's basically telling me, no, I don't want to do that again, then she'll leave. And I need to acknowledge that. So that was just very interesting, but basically she was telling me, yes, I will engage with you. I'll participate in this activity. And my job as the trainer is just to be still and quiet and to do as little as possible and allow her to make decisions because I don't want to do anything that is going to cause her to feel like anything about this experience was aversive to her. I want her to have the choice and control to participate or not, to make her own decisions, and then to feel reinforced by this experience. And so we are going to stop after this. And that brings us to how to end the session. With very experienced learners who get very engaged in the activity, sometimes they don't want to end the session because they want more food or oftentimes they find just the freedom of being outside of the enclosure reinforcing and they, they don't want the session to end. So they're basically feeling let down if you just
put them back in their enclosure, close the door and leave because there's no opportunity for them to earn any more reinforcement or experience anything that's reinforcing to them like swimming or climbing or just being free for a few minutes. But for a new learner like this, this is her very first target training session. And she definitely was thinking here and made some decisions. And I could see that she was vacillating over whether to engage in another repetition or not. In her case, because this was her first time and she's new to it, I don't want to push things too far. And so I think that I am going to end her session here with just closing her enclosure door once she has swallowed this food item and leaving her alone to think about what's just happened, to digest her food, to get a drink, to stretch out, move around, whatever she wants to do to hide. But I'm not going to give her another activity to do following the session. And sometimes I will do that with learners who don't want the session to end. I'll offer them an alternative activity so instead of offering more target training or more puzzle feeding or more food, I'll just allow them an activity they enjoy, like climbing or swimming or just being free to move around an open space for a while. If it's a target trained snake and maybe it's okay for them to have one more food item, instead of doing another target training session, I might offer them a puzzle feeder inside their enclosure to keep them occupied, to transition out of the session that way. It just depends on the individual learner, where they're at in their training and what activities they find reinforcing or not. I'm gonna slowly and carefully close this since she's still kind of engaged here. But I want to end this positively without any aversive experiences for her. I want to leave her with this very first session with a feeling of wanting more. I want her to kind of, for this very first session, feel a little bit like, hey, wait a minute, I want to engage more. I, I want her to desire to do this again in the future. And so I am going to end the session this way. Nothing bad happened. She's still obviously engaged and I'm going to leave it at that because she's not fearful. She's not retreating. She's actually seeming to get more excited about the potential of earning food as a reinforcer. And I think that's a great way to leave this very first session with her. If it was a really experienced learner who'd been doing this a while, I don't want to leave the session like this because then they might delay the training next time because they don't want the session to end and so they draw the training session out longer. That's something to think about down the road but not with her. Since this was her very first time she had a good experience with it. She had nothing but positive associations with me, with the target, with the training environment and equipment. I want to leave it like that. I don't want to push it and I don't want to give her another activity to do because I want her to think about this activity.